Sometimes, things don't turn out the way you expect. I had planned to take a look at the mini DV tape format, 60 minutes of digital video on a small cassette, or 90 minutes in long play mode. This Sony camcorder seemed like a straightforward way to find out, or so I thought. The mini DV cassette format launched in 1995. The 1990s were a different time, a time of camcorder optimism. Today the topic is camcorders and Bob, what's on tap? You know Joan, I just got a new camcorder with all the special features and I made up my mind that with this new Sony, I'm going to start taking some great videos. Spot on Bob. The camcorder I have here is a Sony DCR HC30. This was released in 2004 towards the end of the mini DV format's life. The touchscreen however doesn't work. Time to take it apart and fix it. I ordered a new flexible display cable for $6. This is the most common failure point for the touchscreen and a reasonable place to start. I rebuilt the rotating hinge mechanism with the new cable inside and the touchscreen still didn't work after all that. I measured the resistive touchscreen itself with a multimeter and that seemed okay. The conclusion I reached is there's something very wrong here with this camera and it's probably beyond a worthwhile repair. I thought best to leave this thing on a shelf gathering dust. But I couldn't do that. This is a DV camera. There must be something I can do with this. This camera has some interesting and potentially quite useful ports. First is the LANK port. This is Sony's wired remote control port. This can potentially be used to control the entire camera without needing the touchscreen at all. An interesting option, but I don't have a remote and they're not easy to get. Next is the AV port. This is analog audio and video output, but you can also input analog audio and video into this port and the camera will capture it and digitize the stream. It will then output the digital video stream out the DV port. This is also known as the IEEE 1394. Sony called it iLink, but Apple called it Firewire, and Firewire became the most well-known way to describe this interface. This is a mini USB port, and this is used to read photos from the camera, which are stored on the memory stick. There is a memory stick slot right here. For this video, I'm just going to be looking at the iLink DV Firewire port, and I'll leave some of the other interesting ones for another time. Okay, for a computer I'm going to use the Sony PictureBook, which has a Firewire port on it. Okay, there we go. And the other end of the cable, straight into the camcorder. I've got a battery for the camera. Okay. I'll get some power set up for all these. Okay, we've got everything connected. Now let's power up the camera. The first program I want to load is called Scenalyzer. Okay, we're now connected to the camera. So Scenalyzer is now receiving the digital stream directly from the camera. And as we can see here, we've got uh, a lot of controls and I can even enable recording. All right, let's get a tape into the camera then. Okay, so I can control the tape and I can even record onto it if I want. Let's try hitting record. Yeah, that works. Okay, there we go. So it is working. The controls seem to be a bit weird, they don't always seem to respond, but it's working at the moment. There we go, I can search through. So I can use this software to capture anything from a DV tape or from the camera itself onto a, an AVI file on the computer. So now it's capturing the digital video from the tape 
and saving into the computer. Another thing this software can do is I can output videos from the computer and save them directly onto DV tapes as a digital stream. Which brings up an interesting idea. I could use this camcorder as a backup storage device and save all the videos on this channel onto DV tapes. The problem with doing that is there's about 8 hours of video on this channel and if I save them to DV tapes I'd need 8 tapes and I'd need to record for 8 hours and I'd end up with them all being in standard definition video. None of that sounds particularly compelling. There has to be something better we can do. This is DV from the mid 1990s after all. There are quite a few different reasons for using DV cameras. One is I want the MTV look. I want it to look off the wall. I'm so bloody trendy. I'm a teenager. Isn't this fun? And whatever drugs you're taking, can I have some too? What I want to do instead is save the entire eight hours of high definition video to a single mini DV cassette. As it turns out, mini DV cassettes can hold about 10 gigabytes of data. And if used in long play mode, they can hold about 15 gigabytes, which is more than enough to archive the entire channel. Now mini DV was not built for this sort of operation. So I'll be using third party software, in this case, DV Streamer. Okay, I've got DV Streamer all set up and connected to the camera, okay. And I have the files I want to back up in a folder here. So I'm now going to do the full backup. All the files onto one tape. And we've got about almost 10 gigabytes of data. We'll give it a session name. Okay. And to store 10 gigabytes, because I can't switch it to long play mode, because the touchscreen doesn't work. It's probably a blessing in disguise. I'm going to stick with standard play mode. And to get all 10 gigabytes to fit, I won't be able to have any redundancy. So no error correction from DV Streamer. I'm going to go for straight raw mode. It's risky. Okay, all set up and ready to go. And for this backup, I'm going to use a fresh, brand new tape. There we go, so let's get this happening. Okay, all options are set, files are ready to back up, new tape is in the machine. Let's just start and see what happens. Okay, recording has begun. So this is going to take about an hour. Okay, well the tape just stopped at 62 minutes. And it doesn't seem to have finished recording all of the files. So not everything fitted. Okay, I've reduced the size of the backup now. I've had to take two of the files out. So we're down to just over eight gigabytes. Let's see if this will fit on the 62 minutes of tape that I'm recording onto. We're still set for raw. No error correction redundancy. Now let's start it and see what happens. Okay, well the backup is complete in just under 60 minutes. One reason I stored less data than expected is each file has a header and a trailer equal to about 10 seconds each. With 37 files, that's over 6 minutes or 10% of the tape. I could have combined all the videos together into a single archive, but for this experiment I'm testing the limits of what DV tape can do. Before I check that this has worked by attempting to restore the files, let's have a quick look at how the data is being stored. Mini DV format stores video in 8x8 pixel blocks. DV Streamer sets each 8x8 block to just one single color. That's how it's able to store this low resolution image on the tape during the backup, and also this low resolution text, the pixelation of the 8x8 blocks. DV Streamer then uses the remaining ignored space in the block to store its data. I've got another program here which does the same thing called DV Backup. It's a Mac program, so I've had to break out the old Mac. This program is called DV Backup. One thing this program does is it doesn't set any of the pixels to any predefined colors. You can see the codec trying to render all the data as an image. 
DB Backup also stores a stream of data into the audio section, and that's why we're getting hiss as we record and play back. As the program explains, the audio format storage is considered a hack and doesn't work on all camcorders. When I capture that stream using Scenalyzer, I can save it as an AVI file, which I can then play on the computer, but I can also back it up onto a DV tape. I think I'm in a recursive loop. Back in 1995, 10GB was not an easy thing to store. You would need a stack of hard drives that cost $10,000. More likely, you would have a CD burner, which cost over $1,000, and a stack of 15 recordable CDs, which would have cost $20 each. And I don't know of anyone that would have used 7,000 floppy disks to hold 10GB of data. It's been a few days, time to check if I can restore the files. I've formatted the D drive. 11 gigabytes free. That's enough to restore everything and a bit more. So let's see if this worked. Let's get the tape in and get started. The results are in and I was able to restore 31 of the 37 files which is just over six hours of HD video on a single cassette for a total of just over six and a half gigabytes. On my initial run, I only restored 28 of the 37, but I went through and tried a few again and three of them were able to restore on the second or third pass. So not a total success, but not a complete failure at the same time. Definitely demonstrates the advantage of error correction with this sort of technology. Let's ask Bob. Hey, I'm a big TV star. And now that you've been kind enough to help me, I'm about to become a big star in videography. Well, Bob, by following the suggestions we cover today and use of some of the really helpful Sony camcorder accessories, anyone can be a terrific videographer, even you. <laughs> Thanks for all the hints, Joan. I've enjoyed looking at the mini DV format. I'll probably be looking into it a bit more in the future. So when you're backing up data, make sure you've got many different copies in lots of different places. Some people like to store data in the cloud, but the cloud is a physical object too. Data centers are real places, subject to natural disasters, sabotage, what have you. I wonder, who backs up the data centers? Who watches the watches?